coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. New drone responds to 911 calls. The FAA posts RFI to gather data for a MOID. And drones sent to find surviving koalas in bushfire zones. Welcome to Air on News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned, in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. Impossible Aerospace says their product, Air Support, will transform how the world's cities respond to emergencies by allowing them to dispatch drones directly to the scene of 911 calls to improve emergency response times. Mounted on top of tall buildings, the drones are controlled by police officers and firefighters from secure command stations within their departments. Once deployed, they can provide a live video feed of a situation to responders on the ground, intervene in a situation with sirens or lights, or even deliver crucial supplies like life jackets or AEDs. Air support can autonomously search for missing people, both day and night. The US-1 aircraft powering the system are equipped with powerful thermal cameras, which can see through smoke and help coordinate a response. The company says it's now in phase one of deployment, with several police and fire departments across the state of California, now flying the US-1. Phase two will involve a series of hardware and software updates that enable cities to perform more advanced missions. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Time for today's Unmanned Minute. UTM technology provider Altitude Angel is partnering with Low Altitude Air Traffic Data Provider in Boley to provide what they're describing as an unrivaled picture of airspace to ANSP's operators, pilots, and drone-centric risk management applications. Most recently, the companies worked together at the African Drone Forum and Lake Kivu Challenge 2020, where Altitude Angel served as the lead umbrella UTM provider, while Envoli delivered its air traffic awareness system and drone tracking platform. The U.S. Air Force Research Lab awarded a contract to Plank Aerosystems for the development of guidance, navigation, and control solutions for small unmanned aircraft systems operating in challenging environments. The contract was a result of the most recent solicitation from the Air Force's Open Innovation Topics of the Competitive Awards Base SBIR, which is designed to enable small businesses to explore their technological potential and provide the incentive to profit from its commercialization. Dragonfly will distribute AeroVironment's Quantix Mapper drones to commercial markets. Described as a simple-to-use drone that empowers users through its fully automated operation and instant insight, Quantix Mapper features a hybrid design that allows the aircraft to launch vertically and transition to horizontal flight. High-resolution imagery can be viewed immediately by users on the included operating tablet without the need for other devices, internet, or additional software. The U.S. government has cleared Raytheon Company to sell the Coyote Block II counter drone weapon to approved allied nations as part of the Howler counter drone system. In 2019, the U.S. Army deployed Howler, a combination of the KU band radio frequency system and Coyote Block I, into the battlefield. The high speed, highly maneuverable Block II is designed to use Raytheon's KU RFS multi mission radar as its fire control source. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. The FAA has posted a request for information seeking input from the manned aviation community regarding whether or how they can potentially receive and use UAS remote ID information to further enhance safety by reducing collision risks at lower altitudes. One critical element of implementing remote ID will be establishing a cooperative data exchange mechanism between the FAA and the remote ID UAS service supplier USS. The FAA is proposing to implement the remote identification requirements in a way that will allow the marketplace to grow in collaboration with the FAA. 
The FAA anticipates that USS roles and services will continue to expand and may include services that will provide value for the manned aviation community. The remote ID NPRM does not specifically address the means by which low-altitude manned aviators, such as aerial applicators and helicopter pilots, could participate in remote ID, access data from the remote ID USS, or otherwise benefit from the remote ID information being transmitted from UAS. Queensland University of Technology researchers will apply their innovative methods for detecting koalas using drones and infrared imaging in a collaborative project to identify wildlife populations in bushfire-affected areas. Called the Sunshine Coast Research Project, researchers will be using technology and artificial intelligence to create a census of animals that survived the bushfires. A special algorithm was created to identify the heat signatures of koalas, which can be very difficult to spot from ground level. Using drones to spot animals from the air also allows researchers to cover areas much quicker than they could by foot while also allowing them to cover areas inaccessible from the ground. Researchers will begin their drone survey in the Noosa region fire areas, as soon as cooler morning temperatures allow the heat-sensing drones to better detect koalas. And that wraps up this week's Airborne Unmanned. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to avsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.